we had the brake light come on. It looked like we were out of brake fluid. And we made it down the hill after stopping a while. It looked like we were low on fluid. You should see fluid when you go like this. Not a sign you want to see. See that brake light come on and see you don't have fluid in here. And this guy, he said they don't sell brake fluid. Oh man, so last night, minor disaster struck. We were coming down this huge hill here on the coast of Brazil and the brake light went on. Bleep, bleep, bleep. Figured out where we could stop eventually. Look at the brake fluid. The brake fluid reservoir is empty. No brake fluid. Oh my God, not good, not good. Luckily we were almost to our spot anyway. We got here, but last night when that happened, we were so exhausted just hoping to get here as soon as possible and yeah and it was like eight o'clock so it was pretty dark already right as we pulled up to a gas station to get some brake fluid he closed so he wouldn't help us and we were like oh are there any more hills no there's no more hills but there was another set of hills but the light didn't come back on we turned off the van and turned it back on and the light went off now that it's morning let's go take a look under the hood and check out the brake fluid Oh, there is fluid. There is? Yeah. Oh yeah, it's like full. Well, that's even more concerning. Why is the light on? Yeah. I don't know. I don't know what's going on. Yeah, we're gonna have to go find a mechanic because you really don't want to have problems with your brakes in a heavy vehicle like this going up and down Brazilian coast hills. <laughs> All right, babies, are you guys ready? Oh, we got an engine code. Uh, just the normal engine code. <laughs> the normal two engine codes it's that we get. It's just the normal engine codes. Actually, I was watching last night on YouTube. There's this really cool channel called Pro Masters Only. <laughs> I really want to get the van to that guy when we get back to the States, have him give a good checkup. He said he's ignored this engine code for miles. <laughs> the professional said that he also ignores the engine code that we have, so it's no big deal. <laughs> the oil pump, it's like a switching between high and low pressure modes but apparently it works pretty well in either mode. Um, and then the other engine code we always have is the EVAP system. We'll clear these codes. Clear those codes, turn it back on. And then if something happens on the way, we'll know. Let's check out our spot last night. We found this spot on iOverlander. It was really funny. So many people said how amazing this spot was, but in reality, it's a parking lot. I mean, it's a really nice beach that it's next to over there, but you would think that we're parked on the beach with the best view of dolphins I, like every night. It's like, it's nice, but I think that sometimes people get really excited whenever they start moving around. And I guess, okay, so I guess we're kind of jaded. This is not the best spot for the night for us. There's no bathroom no shower <laughs> that's the beach over there and it is really really cute we went over to it this morning i wouldn't call this my favorite spot whatsoever especially because last night while we were sleeping someone walked by the van and was like yelling at their dog or something i don't know what she was doing this is a restaurant right here it's very beautiful it's a very beautiful spot and this is a church that is a cute tiny teensy weensy little church Danny took the pets for a walk this morning. It is really cute. It's a cute place. But I wouldn't say it was as amazing as everybody made it seem on iOverlander. All right, let's get on the road. I'm not even really sure what to think about it now because last night I thought, wow, we got no fluid in there because I couldn't see it by shaking the thing. I was afraid to open it because it's like a hot pressurized liquid. But the truth is we were going down a super big hill and I haven't been using the transmission to brake much since we recently had the transmission rebuilt. On one hand, I feel like, okay, it could have just been that it was such a steep hill and I was using the brakes so much, but it also happened two days ago and you really don't want to ignore these kind of warning signs when it relates to such an important safety system on your vehicle. What happened the other day was it was a steep uphill, so I wasn't using the brakes like at all. We hit a dead stop at a construction zone, so I put it in park, so it's not using the brakes at all. But 
while we were sitting there in park, you know, the engine fan running, then the brake light came on. We realized like right when the whole line of traffic starts to move, we're like, oh boy. So I shut off the engine, turned it back on and the brake light was gone, which is the same thing that I did last night. And we figured, okay, well it must not be that bad. But uh, yeah, that time I wasn't even using the brakes. So. This might sound a little crazy, but the brakes feel normal. The liquid look good. The pads are great. So after reading up some more about it, we've decided we're gonna let it go until that brake light turns on one more time. If that brake light turns on <laughs> one more time, that's it. You're out of here, brakes. Three, Three strikes. strikes. <laughs> <laughs> Who knows, maybe it turns on later today. I'll try to use the transmission to brake lightly a bit again. And uh, wish us luck, guys. Oh yeah, they, they, they got the brake fluid here. Oh, sick. So I'll just pick up some just in case. Yeah, yeah. I just want to make sure it's dot four. Okay, dot four, 100%. Hey. Hey. So, just to be careful, although we're not being as careful as we should be, <laughs> <laughs> we got this dot four. Dot four. It's made in, I don't know. She could need some. Yeah. Thanks, babe. I'm looking at places to stay in Rio. Oh, thanks. We're six hours from Rio, but we gotta stop. This is too good. We got hang glider guys over here. We got a beautiful bike path. Emily loves taking bike rides lately with some Rita. Let's take a bike ride. Well, first we're gonna have some lunch and then we'll take a bike ride with some Rita. There's a skate park right over here. What's in there? That's so good. Got some carrot, zucchini, pepper, which I kind of marinated in a little bit of ginger soy sauce, uh, sushi vinegar thing. And then I got some sushi rice. Yeah, I taste that in there. That's bomb. I think Graham wants a little nori. Yeah, he's. <laughs> no, 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 no. Uh oh, babe. Better give him some nori. He's, he's pretty insistent. seeing this sign everywhere for pala gelada recheada and it's like a some kind of a roadside snack let's check it out let's see what brazil's got to offer here oh check this out in here so apparently these are all coconut all these ones and this is like the most traditional coconut one and this is something that's not coconut which i'm not super into coconut so i think i'll try that too she's calling it bay bahia oh. So this is a uh, 15. Uh, 15.30, oh, okay, so three dollars. Four dollars. Uh, she had a credit card machine in there. Hey, we got two kinds. Check this out. One is the more traditional pure coconut flavor, and then there's one. That's the traditional. Let's try that one first. That's different. If you compress like powdered sugar into a ball with coconut milk. Oh man, that's gonna be a gift probably. <laughs> They're so cute. I'm 
almost as cute as you. Oh, this looks sticky. Hmm. I would have got more. You like that one? There's still coconut. Yeah? So it has like a stiff shell of something around it. I like that way more. So you think it's like coconut meat? I'm gonna eat another one of these. It was really good. <laughs> I'm not super into sweets, so whenever you came back with two different sweets, I was like, but this one is really, really good. It tastes like, it tastes like not too sweet, not kind of natural, you know? It's just coconut. As they say in Brazil, bom. Oh, they don't go like this though. It just means something bad. <laughs> I've been doing this. Bom. <laughs> <laughs> really wanted to drive through straight to Rio but it's far and the road is like windy up and down. I stopped to look at spots on IO and this was just a mile away. Super chill so I think we'll <laughs> stay here at night. Gutierrez! Oh my gosh your favorite toy reconnected! <laughs> oh she got it! What do you think of our spot for the night, huh? It's pretty good, yeah. It's a beautiful bay with a bunch of islands. I love how the road is just on the beach. Yeah, that's it's just the, a sand road there. That's what's the best part is that we have a view out of the van. Mm -hmm. Because we're, might, we're probably going to work and it's nice to have a view out of the van. <laughs> we got our own shower, we got our own bed, our own kitchen, our own power. Traveling yeah. can get tiring. This is a really oh intense venture that we've tried, that we decided to do. Cause we basically decided to drive 12 hours and um, we're almost there, but oh, yeah, we're getting another bored. five. Yeah, another <laughs> five. Because our plan was we were going to drive 12 hours north to Rio de Janeiro. And that was going to be basically the finish line. And then we were going to start heading south little by little. Have, because we're just used to going south, I guess. We don't like going north. <laughs> I don't know, honestly. We're almost up to Rio de Janeiro, basically in like three days. And it's really exhausting. I don't know why we do. It feels like the Oregon coast in terms of like beautiful islands off the coast all the time, cliffs, hills. It's not like the coast of Argentina was flat, you know? Desert. You'd see a cliff sometimes, it's all desert, yeah. And here it's like jungle, beach with cliffs, with islands, with a lot of elevation change. I'm sure you can't hear the wind, which is nice. Yeah, it's been a beautiful, beautiful drive. I really love it here. The coast of Brazil between the two biggest cities, Rio and Sao Paulo. The biggest city in South America, which I'm, I'm really excited to check out on our way back south. <laughs> yeah, and see the big guy up above Rio. Well, anyway, we'll be chilling here. Hello, good morning, Danny. I think this is my favorite spot in Brazil so far. I think it might be. We're just, <laughs> we have such a good location, just really good real estate. Front view out the window is an amazing little islands, the beach, the waves. Yeah, and obviously we don't have a shower or a bathroom, but you know, we set up our, our shower room last night, so we kind of do have a shower. Yeah. And we both took a shower, so we're feeling good and clean. There's a little restaurant with that camping and the lady has been really nice about letting us use the bathroom. Graham got to go outside. Yeah. Graham was loving it. Some Brita loving it. Besides that, Danny has been super busy. What else are you up to? Oh, trying to figure out the shipping to get us back home to the USA. And we have a guy in Montevideo, Uruguay, because you know, our plan is to go up to Rio and then start heading down to Uruguay, which we haven't seen yet. That's like the biggest shipping port, apparently. Everybody mentions it. Even online, I posted in a Facebook group, Pan American Travelers Association, and everybody said, don't try to ship out of Brazil. The bureaucracy, uh, red tape is, is nightmares. So it sounds like Montevideo is the best spot. Um, yeah, and I'm glad they said that because I was, I was starting to feel silly that we're up here in Brazil and we're actually closer to the US right now and it would be less of a flight and stuff like that but 
with the red tape of the shipping and then also it is a high risk country for rabies yeah so flying the pets home from here we would have to do a lot more paperwork that could take like over a month to do and we did get the pet paperwork to go to uruguay with the pets already and we have a month left on that so we got a month for brazil we want to enter Uruguay with these papers we already made. Yeah. If there's any issue with that, then we'll have to redo the paperwork here in Brazil. Which isn't, it doesn't seem that hard. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. It's probably, the, the thing that made it hard was that the dog has to get a blood test. Mm. But um, that it only took like a couple of minutes for the blood test, so. Yeah, whereas if you flew to the States from here, you would need that blood test, but then we, you would have to get, send that to the U.S. authorities and they would have to take a couple weeks at least. And yeah. then stamp it, whatever, send it back, and then we could go. Mm -hmm. So basically, the timeline is we got, you know, probably a month and a half till we ship, and then probably two months until we fly back. I still have that quote from Montevideo to Philly for 4500 mm -hmm. We thought we found a guy who could, uh, who could split it with us, but it looks like his vehicle might be a little bit too big to fit both of ours in a container. Yeah. Um, He's a little wishy washy, too. We're not quite sure if he actually wants to ship. He did send us some information about uh, going home with dogs, which is nice because we didn't we didn't know what he knew. So, so basically, we've just been like nonstop checking the email to see <laughs> if the if we got any more answers. And the shipper in Montevideo didn't answer us for like a day, and we were like, oh my gosh, she's <laughs> not gonna do it anymore. But yeah. but we just have to chill. <laughs> yeah, but you know what? We couldn't choose a better spot for a work day. We even sure. have reception here. We got the ocean 10 feet away. Jungle to the beach is, oh. wow. And this time of year, to be here in Brazil, I think is the best time of year. I yeah. feel like if it was summer right now, we would it would be kind of like Central America where it was like not fun to sit in the van all day. But right now, it's so relaxed. Last night, I even used a blanket. It got oh, cold enough. So and, quiet too. Yeah, I mean, it's just a perfect place and perfect time of year to be here, which I'm happy. So it's like crazy underrated, right? Yeah, I love Brazil. The food, the people. I know that Brazil used to have a pretty expensive visa for us, so maybe that's why people didn't really go as much. Yeah, and they might have it again in October, you said? Yeah, but but wow, like Brazil is really amazing. I mean, like the food compares to Mexico for me. Like along the Pan American Highway, I thought Mexico had yeah. the best food, but Brazil is like really competing with that. Like the food is so good here. I almost want to eat out 100% of the time, yeah. but that it would really mess up my stomach. Speaking to that, we do eat out a lot and I mm. haven't messed up my stomach. Yeah, the <laughs> so food it's, safety. So it's food safety along with good food. It's expensive a little bit, but not as expensive as the US. Right. It's been amazing. I'm just so surprised that I haven't heard as much about Brazil to travel to. You kind of just hear bad things a lot of the time, which is kind of sad. I've heard that the people are really beautiful too. And they are. <laughs> Let's get to work. Working days are the days I really wish that we had a yard <laughs> so that they could run around like normal cats and dogs. And I think we needed a break from the endless mm. driving towards Rio. So it's pretty sure. nice to just relax a bit today. We're going to watch the finale of Ted Lasso. Yeah, Ooh. Ted Lasso. Karina and Chris said that we say Ted Lasso so weird. Yeah, that was so great meeting up with you patrons. But yeah, they told us I've been saying Ted Lasso so weird. I don't know why. Is this Ted Lasso? <laughs> Is it? It's Ted, but we say Ted Lasso. We say Ted Lasso. Mm -hmm. And they say Ted Lasso. I don't know. I don't know. Let me know how you phonetically <laughs> say Ted Lasso. Head over to Instagram and audio message us how you say Ted Lasso. <laughs> Let us know if we say it weird. Tonight we're just gonna, yeah, we're just gonna watch Ted Lasso. <laughs> and then tomorrow we're going to be heading the rest of the way to Rio. We have a long time, don't we? Oh, yeah, we have I think like eight, five more hours, but I've got a good spot to stay. Where yeah. We can stay inside this kind of like a house compound have a pool, Wi-Fi, and the pets can go around, have some room. Mm -hmm. So tomorrow we're going to be driving super duper far and it's not gonna be as much fun as today, but at least we're gonna be getting to the end of the road. We will see you there, good night.
ready, buddy? You don't look ready. You look comfy, comfy. Ready for Rio. Thank you guys so much on these crazy driving days for coming along with us. If you like this video, make sure to like and subscribe. And if you want to support us a bit more, head over to our Patreon. We'll see you next time in Rio. Bye.